call to order the Tuesday, October 23rd, 2018, regular meeting of the uh, Board of School Trustees. Uh, will you st please stand, and uh, one of our students, Alexis Hermosilla, is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item 2, our 1.03, adoption of the agenda. It's recommended that the agenda for the October 23rd, 2018 regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees be adopted as presented. Move for adoption. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. This moves us into the recognition part of the agenda. Uh, and we'll have several presentations from Battelle Elementary School. Uh, Mr. Wood? Uh, good evening, President Curry, Dr. Spiker, members of the board. Uh, it's my pleasure to host this evening's uh, school board meeting. Uh, we do have quite a few speakers, so we'll keep it as brief as possible. I know that I'm probably one of the ones that keeps it quite long, so, but I've got a lot of interesting things to share with all of you. So without further ado, I uh, wanted to share our STEM projects that have been taking place in the classrooms. I wanted to uh, actually show you just one of the videos that our media clerk put together uh, with a fourth grade classroom uh, dealing with crawfish. So let's take a look. So tomorrow during our staff meeting, we're going to be trained quite a bit more with some of the projects and hands-on materials. So hopefully the staff will get some sleep because I know they're really excited about uh, getting their hands maybe a little bit dirty tomorrow about 7.30. So I uh, wanted to also share with you uh, a breakdown of our school grade. Um, our instructional learning team has been working vigorously throughout many hours throughout the school year. Um, to working on our state plan, um, breaking down the numbers, and um, I just want to say before I show you uh, the breakdown that I'm really proud of our teachers. They spend extra amounts of hours uh, for our students. Our students seem to be extremely excited about learning. They come to school. Um, they really don't want to go home. They want to stay after, learn some more, and then just that communication piece with our staff and our parents is just outstanding. So if we can give a round of applause to my staff at this time. Okay, so members of the school board, you do have this uh, piece of paper here, and I know it's hard for everyone else to see, but uh, kind of to break it down with the report card summary. Uh, we have two areas that we look at um, and break down. One is for the performance domain, the other the second part is for the growth domain. So um, here at Battelle, we get really excited about both domains, but the big one is the growth domain. That's where we really excel as a building. So as you see in the performance domain, um, we had 52.6% pass for ELA, 54.2% pass for math. Um, we went up 
3% in both areas from last year, or actually from two years ago to last year. So I'm really proud of how our growth with the pass rate increased. So when you look at the growth domain, we're looking at very high numbers here in the 90% range. So when we balance everything out, we are at a 74.5%, which is a C school. We've been maintaining a C school for the last four years. Um, we've been rattling our brains, trying to get out of the C, moving up a little bit higher. But uh, as a whole entire staff and team, I'm really, really proud of what we've done and what we've accomplished. And we really do a terrific job identifying students that need that extra help with uh, interventions, um, our MTSS team, and it's, it's just a wonderful place to be and see the magic happen. So all of you are invited any given day and time to come. So next, um, I partnered with Dr. Michelle Fish, who is from Bethel College, and she's going to share a little bit about a grant that she received with Choice reading books, and um, I'm going to let her take this thunder next. I don't want to take too much from her, but our students have taken on this program uh, vigorously from September, and it's going through, I believe, January? January. So um, quite a few books that students read, as well as the teacher reads to them, and we do have guest speakers. Um, Officer DeFries has come to some classrooms and read to the children as well. So without further ado, Dr. Fish. Thank you for having me this evening. It's my pleasure to be here. So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the Children's Choices Project. As a member of the International Literacy Association, I heard about uh, the opportunity to become a regional coordinator. So it was something that I applied for and was selected to become one of five regional coordinators throughout the entire country. So our region is Area 5 and encompasses a nine-state region. And so as the regional coordinator for the Children's Choices Book Award, um, which is a collaboration between the ILA and the Children's Book Council. In fact, this award was developed in 1974. It is the only award that is actually chosen by children. So think about Nickelodeon Awards, most people have heard of those. So if you're in the book world, then you've heard of Children's Choices. So Children's Choices is a pretty prestigious award that you can earn if you're an author or illustrator for your um, children's book. And children uh, across the country, 12,500 children vote. It's based on their vote for their favorite books. So as a part of this, uh, book publishers from all over the U.S. and Canada are sending me the 2018 copies of their new releases. And then I have the privilege of selecting partner schools to participate in this project. So we're very proud of our partnership with our lab kindergarten with Battelle. And so I wanted to do something that we could give back and reciprocate this great partnership. And so I thought, what better way to include the entire school and not just have our lab kindergartners voting, but the entire school. Uh, so the entire school is a part um, of our region of really, it's quite an honor to be a part of this project across the nation. And so Battelle Elementary is a part of this project. Um, this project is to promote reading for pleasure in an era of high stakes testing, sometimes we've lost the joy in reading. And so this allows children to be excited about picking and reading books and then voting on them and knowing it's purposeful because their vote counts. It's meaningful. And they'll get to see when the, re when the list is released in May. Did my favorite book get chosen as well? Because they know their vote was a part of this process. So children actually pick the books that are going to be read versus the teachers, and uh, then they're selected. So in the lower grades, the children might select a book that is read aloud to the whole class, and in the upper grades, they just may be reading independently. 
there are three voting options, so the children vote either I really liked it, it was okay, or mm, I didn't really like it. And it's amazing. I've had the pleasure of reading multiple times in the lab kindergarten to our kindergarten students, and it is so fun to see how opinionated they really are about books. It's so awesome. Um, each book has a unique ID number, and as he mentioned, it started right after Labor Day in September, and it runs through um, January 18th, and then the votes are tallied and collected in New York City by the Children's Book Council, and then it kind of uh, quietly disappears for a little bit, and then there's a big woo hoopla in May when the book list is announced and released publicly, so hopefully we can all celebrate that together as well. Um, so why are we doing this? One, we're promoting authentic, purposeful reading. Therefore, we're getting kids excited about reading versus having to take a test. And it's, research shows time and again that that increases engagement. And guess what? When kids love to read, it actually increases their test scores. Imagine that. Uh, so it, it actually is very beneficial. And then one of the reasons why it can be a great benefit for Battelle is because as the regional coordinator, I get to choose to donate the books when we're done. And so between um, my area partner schools over the course of, this is a three-year uh, partnership for this, and over that time period, Battelle Elementary will be receiving um, over $30,000 worth of children's books for their library. So i um, very pleased to be able to help give back to my community in that way. And um, I'm just very delighted to have this partnership. Thank you, Dr. Fish. That was excellent. Um, as you could see, how our kids are all excited about reading these new books. Uh, but also, there's that prize at the end that we get to uh, benefit so thank you very much. Next I have uh, Meg Sauer come on and coming up here. So Meg, can you come up here? Um, did I skip someone? I am so sorry. Who did I skip? Oh my. I skipped probably the most important person, huh? <laughs> my finger was twitching a little bit there. Actually, um, we do have a student teacher that is in our building. Uh, she's in fourth grade. She does attend Bethel College. Uh, her name is Holly Moreland. So Holly, can you come on up? Holly is team teaching. She's actually in Mrs. Bonner's classroom. So she's learning quite a bit this year. Um, at this time in the school year, she has taken over, seems like completely, every time I'm walking in, she's teaching. So that's just an excellent sight to see. So uh, she's going to talk a little bit about her experience here at uh, Battelle. Thank you, Mr. Wood, for the opportunity to speak, and thank you, school board, for taking the time to listen to my fourth grade experience. So I'm currently student teaching at Battelle. I'm in fourth grade with Jordan Bodner, and it has been so much fun. I'm in my 10th week or 11th week, I don't know, I lost count. And I have been full-time teaching for about four to five weeks, and I'm still learning and growing every single day. And this experience has been quite eye-opening on many different levels. In college, you learn like the different techniques and methods to teach and the different areas of how kids grow and develop. But in student teaching, I get to learn more hands-on things. I've learned more in student teaching than I have in college. No offense, Dr. Fish, I learned a lot in your class too. <laughs> She's one of my professors. She's taught me a lot too, don't worry. And so for student teaching, I have learned behavior management, classroom management, I've learned technology, I've been able to work with kids that are chatty to kids who are really not the greatest behavior of kids, and even behaviors I've never seen before. And then Mrs. Bodner steps in and says, I'll take over, and then I get to watch her and see, how does a teacher really take over this type of student? because there's been quite a few of those situations. And I don't know how to handle things, so she'll definitely step in and help me. And every step of my journey has been looked over and watched. It's kind of very interesting to have that happen to you. But it's really great, because she looks at all of my lesson plans in detail. 
so she doesn't just sign off and say, great job, Holly. She literally looks over every detail and makes comments and says, uh, this isn't the greatest, or I love this idea, how can we make it better? And so it's kind of hard to hear sometimes, but other times it's really great. And she is not afraid to correct me or shape me in any way, which can be hard, but it's also nice to know that she does care enough to step in and correct me when I need it. Um, I've learned technology from her that I have never seen before. Mrs. Bodner does flexible seating. I have never been in a classroom that does that. So that's been really interesting to see and learn. And I've learned classroom management, like I said. I am more flexible, creative, and understanding all because of this experience. And I may not be a real teacher, as a few of my students have reminded me, Miss Moreland, you're not a real teacher, so we don't have to listen. Um, and then Mrs. Bodner steps in and says, you listen, she's a real teacher. So that's great. So I may not be a real teacher, but the things I get to be involved in, like the PLC meetings and parent-teacher conferences, they make me feel like a real teacher, and I'm so thankful for this experience here and for all the teachers in the building that have stepped up and helped me when I need it. So thanks, Patel. <laughs> Good job, Holly. Okay, next, it is Meg. Come on up here. So, there was a, I can't even remember what day that was. Meg came over to the building here and picked me up and said we're going for a ride. So, we took a ride down the street, um, went to the Habitat for Homes site, and that's when they were just rearing in the gear. Um, Actually, a few people here were actually working on some homes as well. And uh, it was just a, a wonderful sight. But when we drove up, she said, I, I might know a person or two, so I might be able to get you in, but I don't know that for sure. So I'm thinking, Meg, what kind of connections do you have? <laughs> so first person we see, she knew. So that really helped to get us in. So she's going to talk a little bit about this uh, project, and um, then we're going to have someone else come on up here, um, and we'll see where this takes us. Thank you, Matt, for having me come tonight. It's really been a great year, and I just want to thank um, everybody that's been involved in the project because the whole district has worked on this. It was about a little bit over a year ago when Bill Welling and Mike Faulkner and I went over to South Bend and met the president of the St. Joe County Habitat for Humanity, Jim Williams. And if you've ever seen him, he's just an amazing, energetic, passionate guy. Um, he talked about how Habitat had changed his life and how it would change the lives of Mishawaka um, families who were going to move into the new Carter Works build project. Um, there were going to be 21 homes that were being built and they didn't have enough um, families, applicants yet to move in. So they asked us to help. As soon as we left that that meeting, we knew that it was the beginning of a great partnership between School City of Mishawaka and Habitat for Humanity. Um, since then, we were able to do quite a bit. We had a recruitment um, session at uh, Liberty School where we had families come in and help apply. We did a letter writing campaign to the, the kids, wrote letters to the Carters and learned about the Carters, and we were so thrilled that former president Jimmy Carter wrote them back the nicest letter couldn't believe it It was so exciting for the kids and we gave each of them a copy to take home um, and then we were able to teach actually the first class ever that Habitat has done on education um, the families who move in have to take I think it's 13 or 14 different classes before as part of the application process and they had never done one on education so our staff came in came up with what we were going to talk to them about, and it's just been a great time. Um, in August, the homes were built. There were 21 built um, on the site. There are 20 more lots on the site where families will build, in, build, and these are all within the school city of Mishawaka district, so we couldn't be happier. At the end of the build, they announced that they bought yet another tract of land just south of there, also in our school boundaries, where 40 more homes will be built. So this is just the start. Um, long after the Carters are gone and Garth and Tricia are gone, our partnership with 
the Habitat for Humanity in St. Joe County is just beginning. And we hope to get a lot of students from there in the coming years. And we're so excited tonight to be able to introduce one of those, the first student from Battelle. Alexis Hermosillo, can you come on up here, please? Alexis is a sixth grade student in Mrs. Lashbrook's classroom, and she's really excited come November to be moving into one of those homes, and she wants to talk a little bit about that and her experience here at Patel. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexis, and I'd like to tell you about my family's journey in our, with our new home. I still remember the day we went to sign up for one of those habitat houses. It was at the St. Joseph Library. My mom and I went to this room with a whole bunch of different families. There are three or four people in the, in the front of the room. Morgan and Andrew were the people that my mom had to go to to get all the paperwork. One afternoon in late January, my mom got a call saying we have been accepted into the program. When my mom got home, she told us all about it and we were so excited. The next week, we start working on our volunteer hours. Each family is required to put in 250 hours towards their home. I wasn't allowed on the build, build site because of my age, but I was able to work at the restore. What I did at the restore was sweep the floors and put things back on the shelves. The first time when I went to watch them build, I was able to meet the carters in front of the house and take a picture with them. I was so excited. I also got to see Garth Brooks and his wife. Two or three weeks later, the house was more than halfway done. There were so many volunteers helping to get our house built. They had just put in the grass because it was all dirt. I also got to see the inside of my house. There was carpet and almost everything, but there was still a lot to be fixed and worked on. And it still looked really nice. Every time I went to the house, it got better and better. And now the house is about done. My mom has been a big part in this process. She has worked every day to get just enough money for the house. I'm very happy that we're getting a house and now looking forward to making new memories in this house. Thank you. Okay, so this is my sister, Sonia. Um, this is my mom, Amanda. <laughs> and then this is my sister's boyfriend. <laughs> Good job, Alexis. And let's go to our last part. Um, so over the summer, um, I was asked through an email to possibly meet um, and talk about how we can get our students to be more fit throughout the school day, um, not just in PE class, not just a recess, not our after school programs uh, with Compass Club, Boys and Girls Club, or even our athletic program, but just more. What more can we do to have them not only be healthy, but to eat well, uh, sleep well, things like that. So um, uh, very excited. I met Mrs. Sarah Van Sickle, um, who is actually from the Croc Center, and she has a program that she wants to talk to us about with uh, Fit Kids program. So Sarah, can you please come up here? And get ready, because I know she's pregnant, but she has a lot of energy, so. A little late for me so this is close to bedtime for me um, I'm Sarah Van Sickle I'm the fit kids program coordinator from the Salvation Army Croc Center and as mr. Wood said I was blessed with the opportunity to meet with four of your elementary school principals this summer um, and they gave a resounding yes to accepting the program into um, your schools what we're doing for those of you who don't know about the fit kids program the Croc Center received a very generous grant to help reduce childhood obesity um, in our community. If you're not already aware, we have one in three children that are overweight for BMI, a one in five that are obese for BMI. So, and that's just St. Joseph County. So our goal is to get those numbers a little bit more under control. 
starting with the kids. So we have a couple different aspects of our program. Um, the main aspect is increasing physical activity throughout the month by about 150 minutes. We do that through assemblies where we come to the school. We've had one successful month of assemblies. We were just at Liberty today. We've been through Battelle and Hums and LaSalle. Um, and then we also do a 60 minute field trip either to the Croc Center or if weather permits, we'll walk to a local park, go to the Battelle Center. That is gonna look a little different in spring, but for winter time, they're coming to the Croc Center. And our goal for those activities is to do something different than what the kids normally see in the gymnasium. So we want to teach the kids that it doesn't have to look like dodgeball or soccer or sports to be active, that it can be dance, that it can be yoga, that it can be stretching. Um, we want to introduce them to different ways to be active than what they normally would associate with it. So a lot of kids just get out of school and they don't know how to maintain that activity because they don't have a gym class or they're not involved in sports and that activity level drops off once they're out of recess. Um, we also have the opportunity for the children to visit the Croc Center for free, eight visits throughout the year, to utilize the rock wall, the pool, the gymnasium, basketball skills and drills. Um, there's all sorts of opportunities for them. And then another key aspect is the teachers of the elementary schools. So our teachers are a huge part of the program. We've given them curriculum that's from California. It's called Wiser Size. It's just a simple eight to 10 minutes of desk side activity that they're encouraged to do as often as possible, but at least once a week. And that it helps improve classroom behavior, of course, like 86% improvement in classroom behavior was reported by the CDC just by introducing that eight to 10 minutes of physical activity in the classroom. And I surprisingly found out that some of your teachers, principals, were already doing some of that before we started. So that was a great news. Um, we're excited to work with the four schools that we're working with right now, and we're hoping I'm, I'm looking over there. We're hoping that we can expand to the entire elementary school district next year. One of my goals, this grant is written specifically for third to fifth graders. So one of my goals is expanding that to first through sixth for some elementary schools or, first, or K through six. Um, so we can just allow the whole elementary school to be involved. And then working with community partners so that they can, there's, but Beacon um, is working on a program called Operation Kids where it's um, targeting sixth to eighth graders. So we're gonna try and help support them and bringing in that program for possibly your middle school students so that the children can transition from A to B to C and then have something for high school as well just to try and help build that community support and have our kids be healthier. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. Do you guys have questions? None? I see smiles. I like it. If, if any of the board members would like a sample of the stuff that we're doing, feel free to just ask me. I've got handouts if you want it. That would be yeah. great. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Thank you, Sarah. And in Closing, uh, I just want to thank my PTA. They've done an excellent job to provide our snacks this evening and as well as my custodial staff, Connie and Jeff. They're just awesome. As you see, the, the school, but not only the school, but this gym floor it just looks outstanding. So I really appreciate their hard work over the last number of days to get ready for not only the school year each and every day, but also this school board meeting this evening. So if any... If anyone has any questions, I'm here, but otherwise we are completed with our evening performance. Well, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wood, uh, Dr. Fish, Ms. Moreland, uh, Ms. Her Ms. Hermosello, and Ms. Sauer, and Ms. Van Sickle for sharing what you're doing in the schools. One of the nice things about doing these meetings is in the schools is we learn a lot more about what goes on in not only in our schools but in the community like the Croc Center and uh, we always look forward to that. Thank you for what you're doing and for sharing it with us. Um, the next item on our agenda is uh, item 2.02, .02, uh, Civil Air Patrol presentation by uh, Mr. David Strawn and Ms. Katie Stocksell.
President Curry, doc Dr. Spiker, members of the board. We are honored this evening to share information about Civil Air Patrol, also known as CAP, and our partnership with Mishawaka Schools. We would also like to honor Lieutenant David Strawn and Colonel Brian Malone um, for their leadership and support. Also, we would like to recognize a group of teachers, Mr. Walt Burris, Ms. Sarah Hoover, and Ms. Shelley Sparrow for their commitment to the CAP program and their engagement in a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm now going to pass the floor over so they can share more information about their program and the impact on Mishawaka students. Thank you, Mrs. Stockstill. Mr. President, members of the board, Dr. Spiker, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Indian Wing Commander Civil Air Patrol, I wish to extend our thanks for this opportunity to make this presentation to the School City of Mishawaka School Board. Additional thanks to Mrs. Stockstow and Mrs. Sickle for their continued support in this initiative and to Jennifer Smith who produced this world premiere video that you see in a few minutes. However, the lion's share of the thanks goes directly to the teachers who took a chance and implemented the CAP programming in their classrooms. Thank you teachers for your vote of confidence. In a few moments I will introduce our squadron commander, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Malone, will speak on one of Civil Air Patrol's fastest growing STEM hands-on live events we call Cyber Patriot, uh, which teaches cyber security. Brian is a retired IT project manager and is much more qualified than I to speak on anything cyber related. I believe those volunteer students manning the high school IT help desk could greatly benefit from participation in the Cyber Patriot program. Furthermore, we believe the Civil Air Patrol's curriculum programming will complement School City's Learning by Design initiative and the Learning Lab at John Young Middle School. Fifty-four weeks ago, in the Battelle room at the Ad Center, myself, Colonel Malone, and two of my Indiana Wing colleagues made a presentation to a small group of assembled teachers and staff about the resources and benefits derived from being an aerospace education member of Civil Air Patrol. It's a special category of membership that we have. Is this pointing, I guess? Okay, oops, too far. Okay, real brief history, because everybody's excited about the world premiere here. Um, this is a brief history uh, where we're at, established uh, December 1st of 41. Um, in 46, we were incorporated as a nonprofit 501c3, and in 48, we were officially made an auxiliary of the Air Force. Okay. Advance. Okay, here's our three statutory missions. We're going to be talking about aerospace education mission tonight on the right. We do have a, uh, our other two missions, our emergency services and cadet programs. Brief mention about emergency services. For fiscal year ending um, on September 30th this year, um, Civil Air Patrol has been credited with saving 155 lives. Uh, we do 90% plus of the inland aerial searches, and uh, normally we save anywhere between, it's been running 80 to 90. I guess a lot of people decided to get lost in fiscal year, you know, it just ended. Oops, I just don't know how to operate this. Okay, <clears throat> here's some stats occurring as of this morning. Um, shows nationwide, it was split out between cadets and seniors. Seniors are, uh, membership is available for people 21 years of age and older. And there you have the Indiana data. We have about 1,140 people on the rolls. We have 27 active squadrons statewide. Our newest one is in Rensselaer. We have in-school squadrons at uh, John... Adams High School at the Anderson Prep Academy in Anderson and the um, McKenzie Center, which is part of the Metropolitan School District of Lawrence in Indianapolis out there near the corner of 75th and Shadeland. Okay, <clears throat> so what's the, the mission here for aerospace ed? 
uh, who are the audience, who is the audience? Um, school city fits in the general public category there, uh, and what is the best way to implement that via products and programs? And we'll, and uh, Sarah and Shelley will, I'm sure, talk about their experiences here, and, and as well as Mr. Burris uh, in a few moments. Okay, <clears throat> we have um, basically three pro programs, 40 different products designed for K-12 and beyond that are grade appropriate. Um, pre-approved uh, curriculum uh, to national standards and this makes it with hands-on activities for the teachers so um, I mean it's um, it's a really good deal okay the evolution of our stem kit program began in fiscal 13 um, initially five kits and now we're up to 15 the great thing about this is <clears throat> the STEM kits, when you become an aerospace education member, they're free to you and you get to keep them for life. Um, one word of, um, I'd like to mention, uh, School City has been gracious enough to, prov to pay the $35 lifetime fee um, that is required for membership and we really appreciate that school board. Here's a list of some of our AE products. Um, the second one down there is a Journey of Flight it's a textbook, all 685 pages. A lot of our textbooks are geared to um, middle and high school and more and more are becoming online because of the cost of, of publishing. Um, under development, uh, we have uh, Women in Aviation, Volume 2. Uh, volume 1 was just published this year, identified 12 uh, females that were um, prominent in, in the early days of aviation. We're also, they also have in under development um, a publication on the Tuskegee Airmen. Okay, when you're an aerospace education member, you don't wear the uniform, you don't have to attend meetings on a regular you know, basis, uh, but you get to use the products and the programs. Uh, you don't get promoted, you don't have to drill or anything like that. Seniors don't drill, cadets drill, as Mrs. Roberts is quite aware of. Um, there's a $35 lifetime fee to, to join. Um, one of the good things about being an aerospace education member, you can apply for a $250 grant every 18 months from the um, Air Force Association. Oh, my time up? <laughs> uh, don't know where that came from. Oh, okay, I'm rolling. I mean, yes, inertia. Um, teacher orientation program flights. Um, I'm sure Sarah, Sarah, and, uh, these three teachers here will talk about their experience back in June of um, their flight they had from um, the El Elkhart Municipal Airport. Um, did, did he let you fly the plane? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, good, you know. Um, just gentle turns left and right and climbs and descents. Nothing aerobatic there. Uh, <laughs> and did you take pictures? Okay, good. We may see, see those in a few minutes. Um, another program we have is Aerospace Connections and Education designed for K through 6. Um, 2017 data is there for you to observe. Um, I'm trying to keep this real short. Um, Another program, we have Aerospace Education Excellence, uh, hands-on. You <clears throat> can choose from six STEM activities plus one two-hour event, um, and the students and the teacher get certificates when that's done. Okay. I plagiarized this in this totality here from a slide I found on um, the Internet. Um, this basically summarizes what AE membership is. Um, I'm sure there's more than 3,600 science teachers in the public school systems in the United States. Um, now to uh, Cyber Patriot. This is um, a wonderful program if you're an IT person. Um, it started in 09 with eight teams, eight teams, excuse me. And in 2017, we had over 5,584. 5, That's a double digit percentage growth in each year over the prior year. Um, 
presenting sponsors, Northrop Grumman, is open to high school and middle school students. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, high school teams, yes, it'll cost you. Okay, that's the bottom line here. It's 200 because we're the Air Force sponsors the Civil Air Patrol because we're an auxiliary of the Air Force, so we get to do it for nothing. But a high school team is $205, $165 for a middle school team. Um, yes, you can have mixed membership teams if you don't have enough, like on a high school. So I'm going to turn this over to my squadron commander, uh, Colonel Malone. Um, by way of introduction, Brian's a retired IT project manager. Um, and this is right down his alley. And a um, little bit of background on, on Colonel Malone is he holds multiple aeronautical ratings. And he is, hails from the borough of the Bronx in New York City. And he's a graduate of the Manhattan School of Music in trombone ensemble. Ensemble, excuse me. So, Colonel Malone, sir. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, board members and uh, audience and wonderful teachers and my, my aerospace ed officer for the squadron. Um, I'm told I have five minutes, so I'll keep it really short. Um, what is it to be a, a lieutenant colonel in the Civil Air Patrol? Well, it means I've been around a while. Um, this, this, this month marks my 14th year as a volunteer with Civil Air Patrol. Um, our association as the volunteer auxiliary of the United States Air Force means we get to wear their uniforms. Um, we get to pattern our own promotion structure with theirs and hopefully not embarrass them or else they get really upset. Um, in my case, I've, I've gotten to the point where the, uh, the insignia finally matches the color of my hair. And uh, it's, it's quite an honor to be of service to the community by, um, by the membership in Civil Air Patrol and, and what we uh, do, uh, as they say, performing missions for America. Um, I'm married to the lovely and talented Kelly Curtis. Uh, the name might ring a bell for those of you in Mishawaka, as uh, she is, as she insisted I tell, uh, the older sister to Bar Curtis, who was uh, recently the, um, uh, with the Mishawaka High School as administrator and football coach for, for many years. Um, and we're very proud of him. Um, Cyber, why, why cyber? I mean, all of you who have been educators for any length of time and, and the students and uh, parents know that it, it, it has to do with computers and communications and connectivity and virtual reality and information technology and artificial intelligence. Basically, anything that touches the, the modern world, uh, business, education, government, military, has some relationship with the cyber world. And uh, one of the things that we're finding is that there's a shortage of trained professionals uh, to do the many jobs needed in cybersecurity, uh, making sure that our computer networks are secure, that our computer systems are secure, that our communications are secure end to end. And so uh, one of the things that the Air Force Association did in 2009 was this pilot project called Cyber Patriot, um, involving a competition training in what it meant to find and remedy vulnerabilities in computer systems and in computer networking. Uh, some of the, the partners, uh, you'll recognize the names of this, um, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, Cisco Corporation, AT&T, um, defense contractors across the board are all uh, backers of this program and enthusiastic supporters. Um, what's the point of involving middle schoolers and high schoolers in a competition to find and fix computer vulnerabilities. Uh, it's this, to address this shortage of trained professionals in cybersecurity so that by the time they 
are graduated from high school, graduated from college, uh, if they have an interest in this area, then we've already jump-started eight years of education to address the professional shortage. Um, again, what's the point of the middle schooler or a, a high schooler learning this? Well, first off, from our point of view, it's to identify who has the interest and the ability or the aptitude to, to find this work exciting. I mean, we're not going to find really talented professionals unless they get excited about the subject matter. But they don't know about the subject matter until we ex expose them to it. And so that was the, the main motivation for the competition. Um, we're into our 11th year uh, as a Cyber Patriot competition, which runs um, with middle school teams or high school teams or uh, the open services teams, which would be junior ROTC, uh, Civil Air Patrol, and Naval Sea Cadet uh, teams. Um, why Cyber Patriot? Um, to make it fun. <laughs> to make it a challenge, uh, to have uh, camaraderie with other kids that share the same interests so that there's a sense of pride in accomplishing these things. Um, why the name Cyber Patriot? I mean, obviously it has something to do with making the country stronger. And as they progress, if they find that this, this field interesting and challenging, that they will be the future professionals that are safeguarding the country's infrastructure. And last but not least, of course, to be of service to others. And that is what being a volunteer with Civil Air Patrol is about. Um, and uh, we are happy to be of service. I think I'll, at this point, I'll just turn it over to the teachers who've had direct experience with the CAP STEM programs. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about the airplane. I'll steal that topic first. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, you go to the airport and you look around and they said they brought the big plane. What does the little one look like? <laughs> That's the big one. Because we all went on the same trip, so, or in the same plane, we could all go at once. So, it, it was small. Um, <laughs> You kind of realize that when we ask kids to do things that they're not comfortable with, they feel like that. Um, so, yeah, it, it was fun. Um, we went up and they really did just, you know, go ahead and fly the plane. And I just kind of held it. And I thought, if I don't move, nothing bad is going to happen. And he, thought, he said, yeah, you can turn it. So I turned it just a little bit. But it was okay, and um, I'm like, you can take it back now. Um, my, my partners were a bit more um, courageous than I was. Um, and if you think it's scary flying it yourself, Hoover was next. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah flew, and, and she did a really good job. It was, I wasn't um, too apprehensive. But, um, and then Walt, I think he thought he already knew how to fly the plane. <laughs> And he was turning, and we were turning green in the back. And, but, um, you know, we just need to realize that sometimes kids feel that way, and it was nice to be in that experience and, and realize that when we ask them to do things and they're scared to try, that that's how they feel, and um, we need to give them that support and let them realize. Now, I wouldn't want anybody to make any mistakes up there, but, you know, we learn from our mistakes, and, you know, if you turn too far, he was there to correct us, and um, so it was, it was awesome, a great learning experience. Um, then we have the kits, and I will talk about one of them. I have, um, a, actually, for two years, I've gotten the BeBot kits that is an introduction to coding, and um, the kids just love them. We've been able to reach not only kids in our own classroom, but I've shared those and, and the materials with other teachers in my building and teachers in other buildings, and then we also used them with our summer STEM camp kids. So it, it is going farther than just our own classrooms. So, so I will let Sarah, since I stole the, 
the really wonderful topic of the airplane, you can talk about that joke. So then, um, and Shelly and I both teach second grade, of course, so sometimes we collaborate on the kits too, because we can share the kits between our buildings if we need to, or the materials, because sometimes, like with the B-Bots, you get just one, and that is hard to do with a whole class. So I got the spheros, I actually got two of them, which were nice, and they are full-size spheros. And my kids really liked those, so it was kind of an introduction to um, coding and things. So they were working on those, and they really enjoyed those. The next one we're waiting on, and Shelly's waiting on this one right now too, is the weather station, because we are studying um, air and weather. We're studying um, our science, I think we come back to a lot of the units all year long. But right now we're focusing on air and weather, and so we're getting a big air and weather station, and Shelly's waiting on that kit right now too. So we're really excited for that because the little plastic um, anemometer and weather vane just isn't cutting it right now when we know we're getting this giant um, one <clears throat> from the Civil Air Patrol. So we're really excited to get that kit. And um, so it's really nice because they kind of tell the kids what kits we're getting and they're looking forward to those of what we're getting. Um, it's nice because we get to keep the materials and of course there's um, nice, uh, I guess, supply and what you can pick and different age ranges. So um, like I said, Shelly might get something and then I'll say, did you like that? Or I might get something. And so we kind of talk even between the two of us and kind of collaborate. And then of course we intend to use it with the STEM camp. It's also a nice way to help fund our STEM program. This has been a great partnership with our STEM program because I know we have gotten the um, STEM acceleration grant in the past, but this is just another partnership to help that STEM in our corporation. So we're kind of looking forward to even offering this um, Civil Air Patrol to other teachers out there and hoping that they will take advantage of this and they can see how easy it is to get these kits and to take advantage of the great materials that are out there and how you get to keep them. So we're hoping others will then see this. We do promote it at our trainings on the STEM Saturdays. So they will um, look into it, and we have the link for that and more information coming for those teachers, too. Great, thanks. First, I'd like to say I'm really humbled to be with these two ladies in this program. Sarah, of course, being one of top finalists for Teacher of the Year in the state of Indiana, and Shelley for getting the Presidential Award, Award in Washington for Outstanding Science Teacher. So I'm really honored to be part of this group. Uh, as for our flying experience, uh, you learn how quickly you break out in a sweat. <laughs> uh, something I learned as you turn an airplane, the ground gets really close to you. Because <laughs> uh, of aeronautics, as you turn, the nose wants to dive. So the pilot says, just pull back a little bit and it'll go back up. Um, and it's quite an experience when the pilot just kind of leans over and says, it's all yours. Uh, and we did, we each got a chance to fly. It was great. As for the program itself, the STEM program, we have to thank the school board for allowing us participation with the Civil Air Patrol. So for a mere roughly $100 investment so far, between the three of us, I guess we have maybe close to $1,000 worth of material through STEM kits. Uh, I've done rocketry last year in collaboration with some seventh grade, and all of this is based around, we take the kits and, and gear them toward the state standards uh, within Indiana. So for eighth grade, we were able to do uh, engineering aspect, whereas the seventh grade that I collaborated with did the uh, force and motion portion of their standards. I'm getting the STEM kit now. John Young has just been awarded the STEM kit. So we're looking at uh, another one of the uh, state standards dealing with weather and atmosphere. So we'll be working with that fairly closely here very, very soon. Um, so again, thanks to the school board, School City of Mishawaka, for their support and everything, and of course the Civil Air Patrol, and all of you because this is your tax dollars hard at work through our government. So thank you. As I mentioned, we want to increase enrollment in this program so our students get access to high quality STEM materials. 
and it is a lot of information. So to sum it up concisely and share with teachers, we have created a short video that we're gonna show you a glimpse of right now. This was created by the amazing Jen Smith, and we will start um, showing this to teachers and allowing other teachers to join the program. Uh, it's basically to get them inter get students interested in STEM subjects and try to uh, inspire them to continue their STEM education um, while they're in school city. The, the STEM material, everything is, well, it's free. I mean, aside once school city pays you $35 lifetime fee and you get free STEM kits, you get pre-approved um, grade appropriate uh, curriculum, you get lesson plans, basically all your hard work is done for you, all your homework, it's just up to the certified teacher when, where and how they want to insert it uh, in their, their teaching. Today we're going to be launching rockets. We're doing a collaboration between 8th grade honors program and the 7th grade honors program. Here we go. Well, we're both part of the um, Civil Air Patrol as teachers, so that was how this came about. David Strong um, asked us if we would be a part of this, knowing that we're both uh, STEM teachers. And so this was part of that program that we could fly a plane of that and of course we jumped on that opportunity because who doesn't want to fly a plane and have a plane ride? Well I think I think one point of the um, of this program is they put teachers in a position where this is something new for us and what kids kind of feel like when they're learning something new and, and sometimes they're scared to do that but but seeing teachers in that position and overcoming maybe some of our anxiety or fears and learning something new. Yeah. I am extremely excited. I, I have flown before, but never in a small plane, and definitely never at the controls. So, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. Elkhart Tower, Cap 1210, is at the admin building uh, with your weather, ready to taxi for departure to Goshen. So once we get up about 1,000 feet, I'm, I'm going to let you drive. Okay. <laughs> you won't need to do anything with the pedal, probably. Okay. You don't need to worry about that. This basically is just like a car, left and right.
I wasn't. Oh. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Thanks. I think they liked it. <laughs> you like it? That was yeah, amazing. Was like it something. Oh my for. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> How awesome. To fly that plane. Thank you. Well, thank you for bringing us through this really by. remarkable program to the Mishawaka Schools. It's a terrific array of opportunities, and for that $35 initial investment, what a, what a great return on investment those, those kits are. Uh, so thank you. Hope to see more of this. Are there any questions from the board? I don't have right. any question, but I would like to thank you for bringing this to us. Um, as Mr. Sean mentioned, I was a member of Civil Air Patrol back in the day. Um, I was more interested in emergency services and um, informal drill, um, but I did engage with the, the aerospace um, education and this is very exciting for me to see that other students are engaging in this. Um, these are some of my nearest and dearest memories from high school and middle school, so I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Well, then we'll move on to item uh, 2.03, recognition of school board investment in the musical instruments, Mr. Gamble and Mr. Chamberlain. Thank you all for having us. We are here. Uh, we, Mr. Gamble was here about two months ago, maybe, back in uh, August, presenting this and getting think everything approved. And everything came in extremely quickly, and we're excited. So first of all, We'd like to say thank you, and thank you to School City of Mishawaka. Special thanks to the school board members, Dr. Spiker and Alex Newman, who gave us a lot of help with this project. For the first time in, we think, approximately 30 plus years, the John Young Middle School and Mishawaka High School band programs were able to replace about 75 instruments to the cost of $183,000. Yeah, we're expensive people, I'm sorry. With these new instruments, our students are now able to cl climb to a higher level of success. The smiles on their faces were equally as wonderful as the sounds they are now creating in class. John Young Middle School got six concert tubas, six double French horns, 12 euphoniums, and one set of timpani. Um, that, I was typing that up, I'm like, that doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it's a lot of stuff. It's very expensive instruments, and we may just took super careful, uh, it's a lot of time to explain to these kids, you're holding thousands of dollars. This is more expensive than your cell phone. This is more expensive than anything you've ever held. So let's uh, make sure we take this seriously. And some of them just stare at me and like, yeah, okay, give me the, give me the baritone. Uh, here was our office for a while as we tried to sort everything out. Here's a tuba and a baritone player. And another tuba player. And some of the timpani. That's Carter playing the timpani. We got a whole nice percussion section in the back because a lot of times you go to middle school band programs and it's hard to motivate percussionists. Everybody else has, gets their own instrument in their hand. I play clarinet, that's all I play. Um, I play percussion and a lot of schools will have a snare drum and a bass drum and maybe a couple other odds and ends. But we're proud that we've now got like the whole spread of things for all of our middle school kids to get a good start and be true percussionists, not just drummers hitting things. And Mishawaka High School, six concert tubas, six double French horns, eight euphoniums, one set of timpani, eight mellophones, eight marching baritones, but wait, there's more. Two tenor saxes, one berry sax, two bass clarinets, two oboes, two piccolos, and a partridge and a pear tree. <laughs> more boxes they were in our back room and in our back hallways trying to keep track of everything. Um, we worked with Woodward and Brasswin, um, the music store that used to be uh, in South Bend that has since closed their shop, but they're still based out of Indianapolis. Uh, have offices in an Indy and different places. And um, our local rep actually plays jazz band and a, and, um, a band with Mr. Gamble. So he's a great connection to have. And we had things after the school board meeting. Alex put a portrait purchase order the next day. And we had instruments the next two days later. And the whole, the whole process took like four weeks. So it was exciting to, I was expecting to wait months maybe. So it was exciting to get everything in very quickly. Also overwhelming. Here's Brad with the Barry saxophone. He's playing that in jazz band. Uh, one of the Timpano from Mishawaka High School. Uh, Bethany playing a mellophone. Three baritone players. Baritone at a football game. Some baritone players hitting concert season with a different instrument. Mr. Gamble with the tuba that's bigger than he is. It's my favorite picture. 
John Young Middle School instruments will be used at the following events. ISMA solo and ensemble contest, ISMA organizational contest, tours of the elementary schools, winter and spring concerts in the Everest Roar Auditorium at Bethel College. So about six years ago, when Mr. Gamble and I started working together, we had about 150-ish um, kids at the middle school level, and we were up to about 260 um, kids six years later. So our parent group kind of outgrew the gym at John Young, and we had standing room only. So Mr. Fisher made some calls and some uh, emails, and we were excited that our concerts are going to be held for free in Bethel College's beautiful auditorium. So that's very exciting. And the high school instruments will be used at the following events. ISMA marching contests, ISMA solo and ensemble contests, ISMA jazz contests, uh, school and community jazz performances, football games and basketball games. We're going to take on a wrestling meet this year. We're going to do the pen meet in the gym, as per uh, Mr. Sandifer's request. Just announced the other day, we're going to be playing, taking a pet band. We got an invite to play at the University of Notre Dame women's basketball game on December 30th, uh, playing for the defending national champions. So that's pretty awesome. That's December 30th at 1 o'clock p.m. if you are interested. And it's an organizational contest, winter and spring concerts, the Memorial Day Parade, and our exciting April trip to Disney World. We'll be marching down Main Street, USA, showing off a lot of our new stuff. So that's pretty exciting. And, oh, look, how'd that get up there? In case you like Portillo's, you can uh, go to Portillo's next Tuesday, and we can take some of your money. Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> so... Um, if you want to hop in here and add some things, we are obviously very, very fortunate and just thrilled to have all this new stuff. Um, overwhelming getting 75 cases of instruments in on top of things, but people have asked what we're doing with um, old stuff. We're selling some stuff, we, a, a few things. Some stuff is not, it can't be sold. It was, it's just kind of being scrapped. Um, some of our repair techs like to take stuff and they can use parts. Um, and some of our stuff we able, are now able to have doubles, so some of our middle school kids can take the old stuff home have a practice tuba and baritone and French horn, big instrument at home that drive their parents crazy. Um, so they're not carrying that back and forth on the bus or to school or, or not taking it home at all. So that's exciting for us. And yeah, add some things. <coughs> You're good. I've been saying it for a long time. Anyway, um, let me tell you about the future. The future is, again, uh, Caleb mentioned the numbers we have coming up. Um, we had 140 at the high school band this year. Um, we're looking at tentatively 170 to 175 next year. Uh, we have started more beginners than any of the individual schools just to our east. Our, 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 our rental rep people, when we get our instruments, where we go to get our instruments done, uh, rented to the, for the kids, can't talk, um, have commented that, hey, you beat Discovery. I didn't say that out loud, did I? But we did. Um, we are very, very proud of these big numbers. And uh, these big numbers, uh, we're outgrowing things, which is a wonderful, wonderful problem to have. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for your, your contributions, everything you're doing for us. Um, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. I kept it short. <laughs> Well, you're, you're certainly very welcome. It's been a long time since we've been able to refresh our instrument inventory, and especially with the great work you're doing and growing participation in these programs, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be able to properly equip our students and introduce them to music. So thank you for all you're doing. When we're moving into uh, comments and questions from the floor, are there any representatives in the PTA? Uh, item 3.02, any representatives of school employees? Item 3.03, .03, representative of the Mishawaka Education Foundation, Mrs. Chamberlain? Good evening. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank you for allowing the MEF the time to just give a little update um, to everyone in the community. Um, we recently just had our sixth annual Growing the Future dinner and silent auction um, on Thursday, October 4th. Uh, that was at the Mishawaka Holiday Inn. Uh, we had about 270 present at the event, so overall a great number. Um, we raised just about $40,000 um, that will come back to the MEF to use um, back to the school system. So. Um, at the event, we honored John Christensen and Christensen Furniture. 
Uh, we're very appreciative of the entire Mishawaka community, including School City. Um, and I apologize, I just realized I didn't introduce myself. I'm Katie Chamberlain. I'm a board member uh, on the uh, Education Foundation. So, um, And then second, uh, we just finished up our fall classroom grant cycle. Uh, we awarded a total of 12 grants. Um, that included grants to Mishawaka High School, uh, John Young Middle, Twin Branch, Beaker, and here at Battelle um, for a total of $10,286 back into the classroom. So, thank you. No, thank you, and thank you. All right, that concludes the uh, recognition portion of this meeting. We're about to move into the business uh, portion of the meeting. So if there's anyone here who is here only for the public uh, recognition portion, this would be a good time to, to take your leave before we move into the business part. Item 4.01, approval of the minutes of the October 9, 2018 regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees. It is recommended that the minutes of the October 9, 2018 regular meeting of the board be approved as presented. Item 4.02, approval of bill warrants and payroll. It is recommended that the bill warrants and payroll in the amount of $1,656,948.62 be approved for payment from the appropriate funds. Item 4.03, approval of fundraiser requests. It is recommended that the Board of School Trustees approve the fundraisers as listed and documented. Item 4.04, .04, approval of financial report. It is recommended that the financial report dated as September 18 be approved as presented. Finally, approval of the consent agenda. It is recommended that the Board of School Trustees approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, item 5.01, the personnel report. Mr. Riggler? Dr. Uh, President Curry, Dr. Spiker, members of the board, I recommend that we approve the personnel report as presented. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Acceptance of donations. Dr. Spiker? We have two uh, donations. $1,000 from the Tom and Brian Foundation, Inc. to Mishawaka High School for the Corporal Tom Roberts Memorial Scholarship. Two student material organizing carts valued at $396 from Donors Choose Org to Liberty Elementary School. We thank these uh, generous donors and uh, we will follow through with a thank you uh, to them. Move for approval, second. It's been moved and uh, seconded to accept the donations as presented. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item 6.02. Recommendation to approve the agreement with the Elkhart Area Career Center. Mr. Newman. Thank you, President Curry, Dr. Spiker, and members of the board. Uh, for the board's approval this evening is an agreement with Elkhart Area Career Center. Uh, this is an annual agreement uh, which is renewed each year. There's no, no large changes um, from previous years. I did provide to the board um, the current year and the previous five-year history in terms of the expenditures with Elkhart Area Career Center. Uh, the cost largely varies depending on how many kids we have in the program. Uh, the average cost per student uh, fluctuates between about $4,500 and $5,000 per student. Uh, this is, of course, covered with tuition support from the state in addition to additional career and technical education uh, monies that come uh, from the state as well. Uh, essentially, what Elkhart does is they, they pool all the staff, supplies, uh, indirect, and other costs together. Uh, they then subtract out any uh, special state and federal funding that they get, um, and then the remaining costs are uh, divided equally per student and charged back uh, to each participating school corporation that attends Elkhart Area Career Center. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have. Uh, however, I'm <coughs> recommending the agreement with Elkhart Area Career Center be approved uh, as presented. Do, uh, does Mishawaka, the school, get any... Uh extra money when they're going to the Career Center. 
from the state? We get the money from the state, essentially. So we, it's called the uh, Form 30A, uh, compiles all the career and technical edu education classes that we offer at both Mishawaka High School and the number of students who are attending Elkhart Area Career Center. So in order to really complete that report, it's really a combined effort between uh, Elkhart Area Career Center and the high school because um, it's a combination. We, we have CTE classes at our high school as well. Uh, so then we get uh, money from the state. It's about $780,000, and a portion of that is used to cover this cost with Elkhart Area Career Center. Well, I know they got, I've toured it several times. I've taken classes there myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's quite an elaborate and very fulfilling operation they have over there. Yes. So. It's been recommended that the board approve the agreement with the Career Center as presented. Is there a motion to that effect? Move for a motion. Second. Mo moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Um, item 6.03, recommendation of the adoption of the 2019 budget, the Education Fund, Operations Fund, Referendum Operation Fund, Debt Service Funds. Again, Mr. Newman. Thank you, President Curry. Again, for the board's approval this evening is the resolution, the form four, which is the resolution for appropriations uh, and tax rates. Um, this is the exact same information that I presented at the September 23rd uh, board meeting. There have been no changes. Um, of course, we held the public hearing on October 9th. Uh, so this is the last step in the process requiring board action, uh, which is approval of this resolution as presented. Move for adoption of the resolution. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item 6.04, recommendation to adopt the capital project plan. Mr. Newman. Thank you again, uh, President Curry. Again, for the board's approval is a resolution to adopt the 2019 capital projects plan. This is the exact same plan. Uh, that we discussed at the September 23rd board meeting. Again, we held a public hearing um, on that plan on October 9th. So this is the last step in the process, which is to approve this resolution this evening. Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? If none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item 6.05, recommendation to adopt the 2019 school bus replacement plan. Mr. Newman. Thank you, President Curry. Uh, again, for the board's approval this evening is the 29th, is a resolution to approve the 2019 school bus replacement plan. This is the same plan that we discussed at the September 23rd board meeting. Uh, we held a public hearing on October 9th, and the resolution uh, is for your approval this evening. Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded for approval. Is there any discussion on the motion? If none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Moving on to reports and discussion items, item 7.01, the September financial report. Again, Mr. Newman. Thank you, President Curry. So as usual, I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have on the financials. I did want to point out, starting with the general fund, we had a month end uh, cash balance of just over 5.4 million uh, compared to uh, September 30th of 2017, we were at 4,552,000. So again, we know we're adding to that balance. Uh, then put down in the notes, again, just a comparison of the health insurance paid. Uh, we're, we've saved about $400,000 in the general fund from January uh, to the end of September. So again, we know that we have that savings. It's reflected in the fund balance here. Uh, moving forward, uh, not much in the debt funds. Um, I did want to point out in the capital projects fund that historically uh, the capital projects fund, in addition to the general fund, uh, have paid for the utilities of the school corporation. I went back and, and sort of double checked uh, whatever additional levy the school corporation has gotten for utilities and capital projects is the amount we've paid from CPF and then anything in addition has been paid from general funds. So moving forward really from October through the end of the year, utilities get paid out of general fund. That's why when you look at the expenditures, they seem high. Uh, they're at over 78% for this time of the year. Uh, but again, that's a historical way that's been handled. Um, and again, that 
when we move to the operations fund next year, all utilities will be paid out of that fund. So this will be really the last year for that process. Um, sort of moving forward to, to the bus replacement fund, I did update the fleet information. We did receive four new buses uh, in the month of September. The, there at the bottom, two 2018 activity buses and two 2019 uh, Thomas 78 passenger buses. Uh, the two oldest buses at the top there are the 2001 activity bus and the 2002 Thomas 84 um, passenger. Actually, the 2002 will be replaced later this year. We've actually purchased that bus. We, it just hasn't been delivered yet. Um, and then that 2007 will be replaced next year. So we've done a tremendous job in the past uh, 12 to 18 months of updating our fleet and we'll be in really good shape moving forward, uh, particularly after next school year. Um, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. Textbook rental still has a balance of over $100,000 in it. Uh, mo the majority of the large purchases for the 2018-2019 school year have been paid for, so that's a pretty comfortable balance. I mean, we always have small little purchases, but any large adoptions, large purchases have been completed. Um, so again, that's, that's a big positive compared to previous years when we've been in the red. Uh, at this time of year, we actually have a balance, and we're going to carry that balance moving forward into next calendar year. Uh, and then the last fund um, that I wanted to talk about is the self-insurance fund. Uh, sitting in the hole of uh, $436,000 at the end of September. Uh, again, we'll hit our aggregate stop loss uh, during this month, this month of October, um, in addition to the risk share money. So really looking at the big picture, it, it's not as bad as $436,000. We, we do, this is cash-based accounting, but we know for the benefit year, 17, 18, we're gonna have monies coming back in the next six months. <coughs> All right, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Newman? Why'd you make them so small? That's, that was just good. It's to challenge our aging eyes here. All right, well, if there are no questions for Mr. Newman on that, we'll move on to the next item, 7.02, uh, Student Information System Work Group. Uh, Dr. Spiker. Uh, the board has... Uh, copy of uh, the work group that uh, will have its first meeting on October 30th and you have a copy of the agenda uh, for October 30th of what we'll be doing. Uh, this work group uh, is made up of uh, uh, teachers. Uh, Mrs. Foley was uh, kind enough to uh, appoint four teachers to uh, the work group. We also have uh, building leaders and we have senior leaders, both certified, non-certified that uh, are involved, building level secretary and uh, others. So uh, we're going to be looking at a, uh, we currently have Alma as our student information system. Uh, the last year of that contract is the 2019-2020 school year. So we're going to be looking at options uh, to AMA moving forward in terms of a student information system that is compatible with our learning management system, which is Canvas. And uh, so this group will be uh, on a short timeline uh, because we need to have a decision uh, and a recommendation, uh, a report and a recommendation to the board in February. Because if we're going to uh, make a change or if we're going to run dual systems in 2019-2020, uh, we need to have uh, a direction and we need to have board approval by February so that we can execute uh, the plan moving forward uh, in 2019 and 2020. So uh, we will give you updates uh, as we move along this journey. Uh, and uh, uh, I think we have pretty good processes laid out. Uh, we have a lot of unknowns. 
but I think that uh, when we are completed, uh, I think that the total school system uh, will be supportive of whatever the solution is that this group ends up recommending to the board for consideration. That's the goal. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have, but uh, you can kind of get a feel for the people that are involved and also uh, what our first agenda is going to look like. We're going to meet all day on November the 7th uh, to work on this uh, project uh, with this uh, group of, of 22 people. Thank you. Any questions? Well, we look forward to hearing more after the group has started its deliberations. All right, then we'll move on to item 7.03, the construction update. Mr. Faulkner. Just here tonight for a, the bi-monthly construction update. Good news is it continues to get smaller, which is which is good. Uh, the windows at the high school, um, yeah, they're looking, I talked with these guys uh, uh, late last week, and they're, they're looking at uh, uh, 10 to 14 days before they are wrapping up. It's, uh, um, so we're, we're making headway. Uh, Brad Yoder indicates they hope to be demobilized by the end of the month, so um, moving right along there. Uh, the vestibule, secure vestibule and the carpet uh, project at the administration offices is moving along. It's actually, we prolonged it a little bit further than uh, it, it may have. Uh, we added um, an interior wall uh, uh, behind Miranda's desk and uh, uh, so that extended it through this week uh, and then uh, they should be finished with that and then we'll, end of the month, the first part of uh, November, we should be starting all the painting, which would be uh, a nice makeover for the, best, uh, the entire administration offices. Uh, the Hums uh, drainage project, hopefully this is the last time you'll see um, any, uh, anything on that because we are, we are finishing up. They um, are reseeding uh, and uh, um, doing that tomorrow. Uh, we had some excavation, uh, some heavy equipment run over some of those sidewalks and we had some minor sidewalk repairs, but uh, that project is, is, is done uh, for the most part and uh, hopefully that's nothing we have to ever have to worry about with the flooding over there again. So uh, we're excited to put this one behind us. Uh, the, the Liberty Ice uh, and uh, Snow Shields uh, was supposed to have started last week, uh, middle of construction uh, indicated that they uh, are still awaiting some of the uh, uh, the shipment to come in. So um, he still thinks that we could probably begin that project before the end of the month. Um, told him it is a priority before the snow falls, um, and, and they know that once that equipment comes in, it's it's high priority on their list. So hopefully, it'll start that here um, when that equipment comes in. Uh, the terracotta work, uh, the roof over the terracotta at the uh, high school will begin tomorrow. Um, uh, Schmidt Associates did get a uh, cost estimate, an informal cost estimate from Zilkowski uh, to do the, all the terracotta work, and that's between thirty-five and 40000 We should be receiving a formal quote uh, for that uh, yet this week. So. Um, once they are finished with the, the roofing, they'll begin, uh, hopefully assign a contract with Zilkowski and begin working on uh, repairing all the terracotta. Uh, the storage barn, if you recall the part of the $5 million project, we, uh, Baker Park does not currently have any storage for any of the equipment out there and that was, uh, the plan was to erect a uh, storage facility out there. Uh, we have it prepped and concreted, and within the next uh, few weeks, we will have a storage shed uh, up there for all of our equipment. So we're excited to have that. Uh, as you know, a lot of our equipment gets stored in every nook and cranny, uh, dugouts, um, under <laughs> bleachers, anywhere we can put it. Uh, now we'll have a uh, nice uh, storage facility out at Baker for that. So. 
the doors, locks, and hardware, uh, that was a project that was what we were hoping to start um, uh, end of this month. It looks like there is, was some delay on some of the hardware from cent Central Indiana Hardware, um, but they look to have everything shipped uh, to them by the 30th. Uh, we should be able to start Liberty on November the 5th. So we'll communicate that with Janine, uh, Miss Mabry, and her folks. And then once we're done with Liberty, we'll move, move to Beager. So we shouldn't have any more delays in any of the uh, hardware or the equipment uh, from this point forward. So look forward to getting this one started. Uh, it's going to be a lengthy one, but uh, definitely going to be worth it when we're, when we're finished. So that's all I have for tonight. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer you. I think we asked you before, what are you going to do with all your free time? <laughs> There's plenty to do. <laughs> well, out at Homs, since that's been sort of the perennial you know, uh, issue uh, over the last few months, is most of our uh, discharge from the, the, the rainwater, is that being going to be retained on site now? Instead it really of is, yeah. Directed toward the city system? Yes, I would say we were just talking about that, and there's some mathematical calculations that we do, and I would say 90 to 95 percent of the stormwater coming from the rooftop units is being managed right on site. That'll be terrific. Yeah. That ought to solve it. Yep. Um, the, the terracotta, uh, you said it looked like it might be about a $40,000. Uh, do you happen off the top of your head know what we had approximately budgeted for that terracotta? Oh, I may have to defer to our... Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, our final item on the agenda, 8.01, public announcements. Um, the next regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees will be held on Tuesday, November 13, 2018, at 7 p.m. at the Administrative Center, 1402 South Main Street uh, in Mishawaka. Is there anything else to come before the Board? Just uh, an announcement, and it is that from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock on Saturday, the Iron Strength and Conditioning Center will have an open house. And we hope that uh, as many of you as possible can visit. So that's from 10 to 2. They're having some basketball camps in the morning. So we thought that was a good way to tie it all together. So. All right, we hope a lot of people shall turn out. Yeah. It's, it's really something to see. Um, anything else? In that case, oh yes, and also come to the football game <laughs> the, uh, against Riley. Um, in that case, nothing else. We are adjourned. Thank you for it coming.